Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name's Ashley, and today I am bringing you a mega video of all of my lemon, sunflower, and B DIYs from the past. I know that these are really popular summer themes, so I thought that I would put them all in one video so you can get as much inspiration and ideas as possible. So if you wanna see all these fun summer DIYs, stay tuned. First, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little notification bell so you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Then in the drop down menu, click all so you're notified about all notifications. I upload a bunch of times a month and coming into the summer, I have so many fun ideas for summer outdoor decorating, summer DIYs, plus uh, also working on a big organization series that will be coming to you soon. So if you want to see any of that definitely subscribe and hey if you love what you see today don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because it truly helps my channel to grow all right like I said this is a compilation video of all of my sunflower lemon and bee decor that I made in the past so if some of it sounds funny or kind of repetitive to you that's why also my editing skills I would like to think got a little better over the past two years so keep in mind that this was all recorded in 20 21 when I was new so I know not a lot of people saw these DIYs which is another reason why I wanted to make this video all right well let's buzz right into these summer DIYs So all of today's DIYs were inspired from these amazing kitchen towels that I found at the Dollar General. I loved the navy blue and lemon theme. And lemons are very special to my mom because they are known to grow in Italy, which is where she was born. So for this first DIY, I picked up this little birdhouse from the Dollar General and I painted the inside of it with two coats of Waverly chalk paint in white. After my paint was dry, I took this white and yellow striped scrapbook paper and I put it at an angle so it fit perfectly into the birdhouse and then I just kind of used my finger to make some creases so I knew where to cut it out. Then I did go ahead and cut it out, then by using Mod Podge, I went ahead and adhered the paper to my birdhouse. Real quick, as you watch me glue this down to my birdhouse, I wanna welcome everyone to my channel. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you love what you see. And if you are returning, thank you for all of your support that you have given me. I truly love sharing all of these DIYs with you. All right, let's get back to crafting. After my paper was down, I took my sanding block and sanded all of the edges so it gave me that nice clean edge. Next, I took this homeward that I actually pulled off of a different Dollar Tree item, a frame, and it kind of broke when I pulled it off. So it already broke in half, so it left me with the HO and then the ME, so I kind of had to piece it back together. But I needed to take the H off of the O because I'm not going to be using it. So all I did was use my little knife to score it and break all the pieces off and then hot glue them back together. Once they were all hot glued together, I used my black paint pen and just kind of colored over any of the spots that you could see where there was card the cardboard underneath or painted or colored over the hot glue as well so that way it all looked cohesive Next, I took this little wooden lemon that I got from a pack from the Dollar Tree, and I just painted it to look like a lemon. So I put yellow on the outside and then yellow on the little inside triangles, and then I used my white paint marker to go in between all of that. Hey. 
Once all of my pieces were dry, it was time to put this all together. So I laid out the letters for the home and I put M-E at the very bottom and then the H and the lemon right on top. Now I did use hot glue for the H, the M, and the E, but I actually used some 3D sticker tape that I got from the Dollar Tree for the lemon, so it popped up just a little bit. After that, I distressed it just a little by taking my white chalk paint and dry, brush, dry brushing over the black letters and a little bit on the roof of that little house also. Now I'm going to give you the final reveal of all of these projects at the very end, and you're gonna watch me put all this together on my tiered tray so stay with me for my second DIY I'm starting off with this little shadow box from the Dollar Tree and it has the little curved up top and when I saw that I immediately thought that that looked kind of like a lemon slice so the first thing I did was flip it over and peel off the tag that was or the sticker that was on the back after that, I scored the top with my knife, and after going back and forth a couple times, I was able just to break it off. Next, I cleaned up all of the edges on the box and on the little curve shape itself by cutting off any excess cardboard or MDF board and by sanding it down. After that, I gave each of these pieces two coats of Waverly chalk paint in white. Now, I only painted this back part of the little 3D box. I didn't even worry about the back of it or what was the front of it because I'm not going to be using that. And then as far as the little curved part, I just painted the part that had the print on it because I'm not going to be using the other side either. After my box dried, I used some of my bright yellow paint from Apple Barrel and just started painting some stripes going down. Now, as you can tell, I'm not using anything to measure this. I'm just eyeballing it to the best of my abilities. <laughs> but I ended up doing three full stripes and then just one little one at the side so it looked even. Next, I used this blue and white straw that I got in a pack from the Dollar Tree, and I cut it down so I had two even sticks. Next, by using that yellow paint, I outlined the perimeter of that curved piece. While that was drying, I took this burlap ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree and I cut off a piece to fit on my box. Then I went ahead and cut off the ends because so, I'm going to fray it. So I cut off the ends and then I pulled some string off of the sides so that way it was frayed. Now before I hot glued that down, I wanted to put my letters on there to make sure that they were all going to fit. So I spelled out Lemonade and I used these little stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree. Once I knew that that was going to fit, I trimmed down the edges and then hot glued my burlap ribbon with my word down at the top of my box.
After that, I took my Waverly Antique Wax and I distressed the curved part and my box. I wanted to make this look a little bit rustic. After that, I took my curved piece and I spelled out the word fresh in those sticker letters. Next, I flipped it over and I hot glued those straws down on either side of that curved piece. Then I went ahead and hot glued it to the top of that box. Now you do need to hold the straws a little bit so that way it sets but I just put a generous amount of hot glue on the bottom of the straw and then I pushed them on the top of my box. Next I took this little chalkboard sign and it did have a stick attached so I just broke it off and then by using my white paint marker I wrote 50 cents in the middle of my little chalkboard. Then I went ahead and hot glued it to my sign underneath where it says lemonade. Next, I took this pack of glass jars and I pulled one out and I did get this from the Dollar Tree. Then I took this clear glue that I got from the Dollar Tree as well and I filled the jar about halfway with the glue. Next, I took some of that yellow paint and just put a little dab in there and stirred it around to make it look like lemonade. Now this idea actually came from Liz Moore Decal and Decor and I really loved how she made the lemonade and you'll see I'm going to do this in another DIY coming up, but I knew I wanted to do this. I just wasn't sure how I honestly was just gonna fill the jar with yellow paint but I loved that she put the glue because then I didn't have to use as much paint so it was genius so thanks Liz <laughs> after that I went ahead and hot glued that jar on top of my little box and that completed this super cute lemonade stand DIY for my third project, I found this glass jar at the Dollar Tree and I'm showing you the top because it really looks like a lemon and you'll see how much it looks like a lemon here in a minute. So all I did, this one is so easy, all I did was paint the top with that yellow paint and then you're going to see that I wiped it off. but. On the inside, on the middle part, it actually stayed because there's a little dip. So you're gonna see, see there how there's yellow in those little, um, I don't know what you wanna call them, those little triangles, I guess. And it really looked like lemons. So then I took my white paint and I painted around the edges and then I just kept painting this so it would look like a lemon. After my top was all painted, I took some yellow and white twine that I also got from the Dollar Tree and I wrapped it at the very bottom to kind of clean up that edge. Finally, to complete this jar, I hot glued that same twine and some blue twine around the middle of the jar. Now, you will see at the end that I ended up taking this off and just tying it around the lip of the jar, but you can do whatever you'd like and however you want. So I thought that this was perfect to throw on my tiered tray and I'm actually gonna put some lemon drops in it. Moving right along to our fourth DIY, I took this rolling pin sign that I got from Dollar General for a dollar, and the first thing I did was take the twine hanger off the back. Now, I just discovered that if you just pull it really hard, then the staples will come off, and then you can get all of that twine. 
After that, I flipped it over and I painted the handles of the rolling pin with some white Waverly chalk paint and then I also painted the inside part of the rolling pin with that paint too but I left the yellow on there because I thought it was the perfect yellow for our lemon themed tear tray. After that was all dry, I took this navy blue and white striped paper that I got from the Hobby Lobby, not the Dollar Tree, Hobby Lobby, and I just measured it so it would fit the inside part of that rolling pin. And then after that, I cut it out and then by using Mod Podge, I glued it down to the inside of the rolling pin. Now I did make sure to put Mod Podge around the edges as well, that way they didn't come up. And then after that, I used my sanding block to sand down any excess paper so I had that nice clean edge. I also went in the middle and sanded that too so it looked a little rustic. Next, I took those same little letters that I you got from the Dollar Tree, those sticker letters, and I spelled out easy peasy. <laughs> After my letters were all pushed down and positioned correctly, I sanded over it just a little bit so it made it look a little rustic and then I went over the letters and the top of the scrapbook paper with Mod Podge to adhere it all down. Next I took my blue and yellow twine and kind of wrapped them together, cut off a long piece and then simply just tied a bow on one of my handles of the rolling pin. After that, I decided that I wanted it to look a little bit more beat up, so I took my sanding block and really sanded down the handles to bring out that natural wood that was underneath. Then I took my Waverly Antique Wax again and I just dry brushed that all over my rolling pin to give it that rustic look. Now, as I was looking at this, I realized from far away you can't see the peasy because it's black letters on blue. So I ended up taking my white paint marker and just tracing over the black letters. That way you can see it better and this helped so much. So after I was done doing that, this little project is complete. All right, number five. I picked up this little picture from the Dollar General for a dollar and the first thing I did was paint over the M with my white Waverly chalk paint. Then I took my ivory chalk paint and painted over that because the background color is actually more ivory than it was white and this blended in perfectly but I made sure trying not to touch the leaves around it because I wanted those to stay how they were. After that was dry, I took another one of those little wooden lemons and I needed to cut it in half because I just wanted like a lemon slice. So I used my miter shears to cut it in half and then I sanded it down so it was a nice smooth edge. FYI, if you're ever looking for any of these tools that I use, like my little ladybug vacuum or the miter shears or wooden beads, they're always linked down in the description box below. So make sure to check that out. After my little piece was ready, I went ahead and painted that to look like a lemon as well.
while that lemon was drying, I took these foam 3D letters that I got from my mother-in-law for Mother's Day, so unfortunately I'm not sure where she got them, but I suppose I could ask. <laughs> but I spelled out Hello Summer, and I kind of curved my words so that way it followed the leaves on the top and the bottom. Next, I hot glued that little lemon slice right in the middle of my words. After that, to make it look a little bit more distressed, I dry brushed my white Waverly chalk paint around the leaves and on the black letters. Now I did put some white paint around the perimeter too, but you're gonna see right now that that was not necessary because the more I looked at it, the more I realized those holes really bugged me. So I used some Dollar Tree spackling to fill in the holes. Then after that dried, I went ahead and sanded it down. Then I took a baby wipe and some Waverly Antique Wax and just stained the outside of my little sign. And I think that this made it look so much better. This sign is ready for my tiered tray. This six DIY is so easy. So I picked up this little blue truck from the Dollar General for $2 and it did have a succulent in the back but I pulled it out. So I started off by just cutting off some random little leaves that I had left over on some picks of flowers and I just used whatever I had. I ended up using four and then some little ones in the middle. And then I just took some little yellow beads that I also got from the Dollar Tree in a big pack and I just hot glued it all down in that bed of the truck. I want it to look like a little lemon delivery truck or something. So I, it was just so cute. And then I also filled those holes on the beads with some hot glue and then I painted over it with yellow so that way you can't really see the holes. But I just basically arranged these beads in there how I liked and I really love how this came out. After it was all glued down, I used my skinny white paint marker and I wrote lemons 25 cents on the side of my truck. How simple and cute did this little tear tray DIY come out? Okay, number seven. This one is super simple as well. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did with that little lemonade jar in our lemonade stand DIY. So all I did was take the rest of whatever was in that bottle that I didn't use on that mini one, I poured it into this little mason jar that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now this did have a lid on it, and I found this where all the glass is. So like the glass wine glasses and, and beer mugs and stuff like that. And then I took a full bottle of that glue and put it in there. So it's about one and a half bottles of that glue. Now, I do wish that I had a little more, so if I could go back, I would actually add two full bottles of that glue, but I still think this came out so fun. So then, after I got all my glue in, I took a little dab of that yellow paint and a a skewer and I just mixed it all around to make it look like lemonade. After that, I cut down one of those blue and white straws and I positioned it so it was kind of leaning and I did end up hot gluing the straw to the top or the rim of the glass. That way it would stay put. Now, of course, this is glue, so as it dries, the straw won't move. But I just thought this was so adorable. And then to complete it, I took my blue twine and I wrapped it around the lip of that little mason jar and then tied it in a bow. And now I have a little glass of lemonade. How fun and cute was that? Now my eighth DIY kind of gave me some issues, so I'm just going to walk you through this the best I can. So I used this little box from the Dollar Tree, and it does have glitter on it, so I first went ahead and sanded all of that down, then used my little ladybug to suck up all of the dust. Next, I gave this entire thing two really good coats of Waverly chalk paint in white. 
This is your friendly reminder. If you're loving what you're seeing today, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps my channel to grow. But it also tells YouTube that you love what you're seeing and that you wanna see more of my stuff. So hit that like button. While that was drying, I took my leftover eggs that I had from Easter, and these were the mini ones, and I painted them with white Waverly chalk paint. Now, I'm going to just show you one, but I did end up painting a whole pack, which I believe was six. So I gave it a coat of the white Waverly chalk paint first, and then once it dried, I did go back and paint over it with that bright yellow paint from Apple Barrel. Okay, so here's where I say it gave me a little trouble. You can see that I painted a lemon up top. Ignore it, or you could do it. <laughs> it depends if you like it. I ended up not liking it, so I didn't even show you how I did it. But what I did do was paint the front part of that box in that bright yellow paint, and I ended up giving it two coats. Then once that dried, I took this pack of chalkboard tags and I cut down one of the tags to fit in the middle of the front part of my box. So I just cut down a little rectangle. After I had it cut out how I liked it, I went ahead and hot glued it down in the middle of the front of my box. After that, I took these little puffy stickers and I painted four of them with the white Waverly chalk paint. Now after they dried, I went ahead and I peeled them off and I hot glued one to each corner on the inside of that chalkboard. Now this is why you wanna make sure that your little puffy stickers are completely dry before you start gluing, because as you saw, I got a little white on the chalkboard part. That's okay, all I did was use my black paint marker and cover it up. After that, I used my white paint marker and I wrote out lemons, 25 cents, inside of my black chalkboard little tag. Next, I grabbed some leftover leaves that I had on some random picks, and I honestly just used what I have. So just go through your stash and pull out whatever you have. And after my little eggs dried, I kind of held them up to the leaves because now we're gonna add some leaves onto our faux lemons. And I went ahead and cut them down so the leaves were proportional to the egg. And then I hot glued the lemon or the leaves on top of the little egg to make it look like a lemon. Once I had all my leaves on, I took some moss and put it in my little box and then just arranged the little faux lemons inside the box. Now I am going to tell you that I ended up off camera cutting off the top of that box. When I was arranging this in my tear tray, I just could not find a good place for it where you would be able to see the lemon. So, And I really honestly didn't really love it anyways. So I just decided to cut it off. So you can keep it on there if you want or you don't have to, whatever you wanna do. <laughs> All right, let's move into DIY number nine. I took this little floral gem disc thing, I don't know what you wanna call it, but it was in the floral section at the Dollar Tree, and I flipped it over and took off the tags and sanded it down so it wasn't really sticky. Next, I painted the back of it with some white Waverly chalk paint. After that, I simply used my yellow paint and I painted this to look like a lemon. Now as you watch me paint this, please keep in mind, I am not an artist. I do not know how to freehand draw, so I honestly just did my best and this was the best way I knew to draw a lemon. After that was dry, I took those foam 3D stickers again and I spelled out Lemon Market right in the middle of my little circle. Now, the thing that influenced me with this was 
on that pack of letters, there was that little arrow. So I'm like, oh, I can use that for something. And that's exactly what I did. Then after all my letters were down, I took that white Waverly chalk paint and I br dry brushed that over my letters to give it a little rustic look. Next, I took my blue twine and I cut off a really long piece and I doubled it up and threaded it through that little hole. And then I put the open ends through the little loop. After that, I took some of these beads that I had on a garland already, so they're white and they're natural, and I took all of the natural beads and I put them on a skewer and painted them with that yellow paint. Now I apologize, I lost some footage here, but after those yellow beads were dry, I took some of those little dark blue beads that come in that big pack from Dollar Tree, and I just threaded them on to the twine, and I did white, blue, yellow, white, blue, yellow. And then I went ahead and tied a little piece of string at the bottom of that last bead to hold it together, and I did add some hot glue for some extra support, and now I have this super cute little lemon garland. It's really not like a beaded tassel garland, but it's just like a little hangy thing <laughs> that I think is super cute. And now it's ready to hang off of my lemon-themed tear tray. Okay, we finally made it to DIY number 10. So for this one, I took a soccer ball that I bought at the Dollar Tree and a big dowel rod, and I just stuck it into the soccer ball and hot glued it down. Next, I took my Moss Waverly chalk paint and painted the entire ball with that. I actually think I gave it two coats, but you really don't need to. I just did it as a base coat. Next, I grabbed this pack of eggs that, again, I had left over from Easter, and I put one on a skewer and I actually ended up hot gluing it on the skewer so it wouldn't move so much. And then I painted all of them with that yellow paint, that yellow apple barrel paint. While my lemons were drying, or the eggs were drying, I took a baby wipe and Waverly Antique Wax and stained my little dowel rod. Once that was dry, I stuck my dowel rod into a bucket with some floral foam. Now you're gonna see I'm gonna change that out later, but just to hold it up, I stuck it in there, and then I simply just started taking any kind of leaves in my stash that I could find and just covered this entire thing. I mixed up the leaves, they are not all the same. I just kind of randomly placed them, but I just did this until the entire ball was covered. Covered. Also, sorry about the mess behind me, but this was the only angle that I could get to capture how to do this. But that's my craft room, guys. It's reality. <laughs> After my ball was completely covered with the leaves, I took those little yellow eggs and placed them randomly around my tree to make it look like a lemon tree. After that, I took the stick out of that blue base and I also took out the floral foam and I stuck it in just a regular terracotta pot that I got from the Dollar Tree. And then I had to cut it down because it, was, it wasn't as big as the blue bucket. But I stuck it in there and then I stuck my little uh, my, my tree in there with some moss. Next, to complete this, I cut off some yellow and white twine and some blue twine and I wrapped it around the rim of my, or underneath that lip of that terracotta pot and tied it in a simple bow. And I apologize, the angle is not gonna be real great here, but <laughs> that's all I did. And now this tree is ready to put in my lemon display. And now that these DIYs are done, it's time to decorate my lemon themed tiered tray. 
So today I'm going to be decorating this galvanized tiered tray. So first I'm going to start off with my little lemonade stand and stick that in the back on top. And then next to it I'm going to put my Ray Dunn tea mug with a little lemon topper. Then I'm gonna grab this little picture that I made in my Kirkland Summer Dupes video, which I will link down below and at the end of this video. And I put some baby's breath in it and then stuck that behind the lemonade tier, or the lemonade stand and the tea mug. After that, I grabbed my a little bowl and I stuck that upside down in front of both of those then i took this lemon bowl with a candle that my mom actually got from the amalfi coast when they visited italy a couple years ago and i stuck that right on top of the bowl to add some height after that i took my rolling pin little sign and stuck that in front of the bowl then I took my little jar that we made and some lemon drops that I bought at a little candy store here locally and I filled my jar with those lemon drops and then stuck that behind the rolling pin. Now the view that you are seeing is kind of at a downward or upward angle. If you were standing looking at this tiered tray, you would be able to see everything in it. It's just that this view is not good because you can't see, but I promise you, if you were standing looking at it, you'll be able to see everything. To complete the top, I grabbed my little mason jar of lemonade and stuck that in front of the rolling pin. And here's how the top of my tiered tray looks. What do you think? Now I'm moving down to the bottom of my tiered tray. I grabbed my quench watering can from Ray Dunn and my lemon and honey mug with the topper from Ray Dunn and stuck those in the back. Next, I took my home sign that I DIY'd and I leaned that in front of my little watering can. Now I did end up moving my watering can to the middle of the back of the tiered tray and then leaning, leaning the home sign up against that. Next, I took this lemon, little lemon crate that I made, and like I said, I did cut off the top, and it just fit better like that. Then, I took this spoon that my mom brought back from the Amalfi Coast in Italy, and I stuck that right in the center. I really wanted to incorporate a lot of the items that she brought back, so I made sure to leave room for all of those, because I know that those mean a lot to her, since they came from her home country. Next, I took my little blue truck and stuck that in front of the spoon. And then I took my Hello Summer sign and stuck that in front of the spoon as well. And I just kind of leaned it up. After that, I took this really cute Sale and Pepe shakers that my mom brought back from Italy and stuck those front and center. Then to complete the entire tiered tray, I hung my little beaded garland off the top. I really love how the bottom of my tiered tray came out. I really love all the colors and I am really digging the blue and the yellow lemon theme going on here. But you tell me, what do you think? Then to complete my whole display, I added my lemonade jar and my lemon tree to the sides of my tiered tray and I really loved it. I really love how this tear tray came out, but not only that, I love how all of these DIYs came out. I'm so happy that I could incorporate my DIYs with my mom's little items from Italy, and I think she really loves looking at them too. I think my favorite 
it's a tie between that Hello Summer sign and that Hanging Garland. I really love both of those, but you're gonna have to let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. Also, are you doing a lemon theme this year or are you doing a bee theme like I did in my last video? You're gonna have to let me know how you're decorating your house for summer this year. This first DIY is so easy. I picked up this little wooden home sign from Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna give it a foam stained look by taking a baby wipe, dipping it in some Waverly Antique Wax, and just basically rubbing it all over my sign. After that, I'm going to take my sanding sponge and I'm going to sand it down just a little bit to bring out that natural wood from underneath. Then I'm going to take this pack of stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree and these stickers were basically my inspiration for all of my DIYs today. So I took one of the sunflowers and I simply just stuck it on the O. And that was it. It was that simple. For the next DIY, I'm going to take this sun cutout that I got from the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm going to remove the inside part of the sun. Next, by using my Maze chalk paint from Waverly, I'm going to go ahead and paint this entire sun. Now, in this video, uh, my three main colors are going to be a, a type of yellow, a green, and a brown. Those are going to be all the colors that are my main colors with accents of blue as well. So after I put the maize color on, I went in with my Apple Barrel Bright Yellow and I kind of just dry brushed that on top to add different layers of color and some dimension. Now I started to paint the edges or the sides around but then I really liked the dark wood so I just kept it now all of these are going to be rustic looking and I really loved how they came out so I just kind of went back and forth between both of my yellows and just started layering them to again add more detail and dimension After that, I went in with some pumpkin orange and I dry brushed that on there with my chippy brush. Now, I did make sure to start from the middle and brush out. That way, all of my orange was going in the same direction. After that, I put it off to the side and I grabbed the middle part of my sun. So next I took some Waverly Antique Wax and I basically just painted the front of that circle. Now I did not wipe it off with a baby wipe or anything, I just kept it as is. Then once that wax was dry, I took this brown burlap and I basically just cut it to fit on that circle. Now this is going to kind of create the seeds that would be in the middle of a sunflower. So I just covered the whole circle with that. Real quick, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for choosing to stop by today. I really hope that you love what you see and that you choose to stick around by subscribing to my channel. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. I hope that you love what you see today and I hope that you are a subscriber as well. Well, let's get back into the DIYs. So after my circle was covered, I took that chippy brush and some orange paint and I basically just dabbed it on the top and then I went through with the Waverly Antique Wax and I kind of just went back and forth between the orange and the brown. That way it added more dimension and looked like seeds of a sunflower. Thank you. 
After that, I replaced the center of my sun back into the sun, and now it is a beautiful sunflower. Now to help make my little sunflower stand on its own, I took one of the blocks that I got in a pack from the Dollar Tree and I simply just hot glued it to one of my little petals of my sunflower. Now to do this, you want to make sure to stand it up and kind of tilt it back a little bit so it naturally just stands up. So then to complete this, I took one more sticker from that sheet of stickers and I stuck it right in the middle and that was it. For my next DIY, I am taking a metal flower. Now, I picked up a ton of these, and if you caught my video of four ideas for these metal flowers, then you probably know where I'm going with this one. I'll drop that down in the description box just in case you missed it, but the first thing I did was lift up all of the petals so that way I can easily get to the bottom layer. Then I took my bright yellow apple barrel paint, and I'm just bright dry brushing over the orange now this one happened to be orange if it wasn't I would have painted this entire thing yellow a solid yellow and then added the orange with some paint but I lucked out and I had an orange one left so I just dry brushed some yellow over it once it was dry I took some burlap and I cut off a little circle to fit inside of my sunflower Now before I glued that on, I took that chocolate bar apple barrel paint and I painted the middle of my flower. Then after, after that dried, I hot glued that piece of burlap right on top and then I put so much paint, I just used that to cover over the burlap to give it the texture of the seeds. Next, I put that off to the side and grabbed this sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. And the first thing I did was remove the little house that was in the middle. So I pulled that off, it came off really easy, and then I took that chocolate bar paint again, and I just painted the bottom of that sign. Now, it did not cover it fully, and that was okay, because not a lot of it is going to show, but I was careful not to get it on the inside white part. Once that was dry, I took another one of those blocks and I hot glued it to the block that was already there to give it some height. And then by using my super glue and my hot glue, I went ahead and glued my sunflower on the blocks. Now again, with metal, you can't just use hot glue because hot glue and metal don't get along. So you have to use something other than hot glue. And then to add one final touch, I dry brushed some Waverly Antique Wax all around the frame and a little bit on my sunflower as well. For my next DIY, I grabbed this little block that I got from Crafter Square. And the first thing I did was cut off the twine hanger on the block. And then I used some spackling to cover in the hole. Once that spackling was dry, I did go ahead and sand it off. So that way it was nice and smooth. Then I took a baby wipe in that Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to faux stain my wood piece. After that, I took my sandpaper and I sanded it down just a little bit so that natural wood underneath came through. Then I took a chippy brush and my ivory chalk paint and I'm just dry brushing over the antique wax. And then again, I'm going to sand over that to blend everything in. Thank you. 
Next, I took this green burlap ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree and I cut off a little piece to fit in the middle of my little block. Now I did decide to cut off the hems or the edges, that way I could fray the sides of this little piece. Next, I took this little truck sticker and a sunflower sticker, stuck them together, and I apologize, I lost footage of that, and then I hot glued the truck onto the little green piece of burlap. I lost footage of that too, I apologize. And then I'm gonna take these foam pop-up letters and I'm gonna spell out fresh picked 25 cents. Now, at this point, I didn't know how I wanted to arrange my little sign, so I kept kind of messing with it, and then this is what I decided. So I have my truck in the bottom right-hand corner, and then my wording off to the side. So then after I decided that that's where I wanted it, I took some twine that I had already wrapped. It was already glued from a different DIY, and I had just pulled it off, and then I just simply put it on the side of that little wood piece. Then I cut down my little green ribbon again and I slipped it underneath the twine this time and then I'm going to glue that truck on top of the twine. I'm sorry this is so choppy. It just did not help that I lost some footage. I don't know what happened but I promise it was so easy to do. Finally, to make those black letters pop just a little bit more, I dry brushed that ivory chalk paint over the letters and a little bit over the entire sign as well. Then I took a little twine bow that I also had left over and I hot glued it on top of the sunflowers on the top right of my sign. And that completed this little wooden piece. Now off camera, I did go through with my white paint marker and and I painted all of those letters with that because I just still felt that they just didn't pop and that they it was just too dark. But you'll see that in the final reveal. Next DIY, I took this little jewelry tray and I got this a while ago but I purposely saved it because I had this in mind and I simply painted the entire thing except for that little middle section with that Maze Waverly chalk paint. Then I went back and forth between the bright yellow paint and the Maze paint again just to give it some layers of paint and the yellow and some dimension. Then I took that orange paint, that chippy brush, and I added just a little bit of orange on my petals as well. Then I also brushed over it with that Waverly Antique Wax. Now for the center, I decided to cover it in some twine. So I started at the bottom and then just simply hot glued it down and then wrapped and wrapped and wrapped and then hot glued it again. So I didn't hot glue on every wrap around, just every so often. And then as I got to the top, I did add more and more hot glue. That way it all stuck together. After that, I took my scissors and just trimmed off any of the stray hairs on my twine. I know a lot of people use lighters, but I kind of have a fear of fire, so that's just my method of doing it. <laughs> 
And then I decided that it just needed a little bit more detail, so I took that orange and yellow and dry brushed it back on. Then the middle was just a little too light for a sunflower, so I took that chocolate bar paint again and I simply just painted all of my twine to darken it up. And I did use a makeup sponge to do this and I just kind of dabbed it all over. Finally, I took this wall decal that I got from the Dollar Tree and there were two little bees on it so I took one and put one above the little middle section and then I took a second one and put it underneath and now we have a cute little sunflower. Next up, I took this pack of wooden cutouts that I got from the Dollar Tree and I took out all of the palm trees. Now, to do this next step, I took some painter's tape and I curled in the, end, the ends and then I taped it down so the sticky part was up and then I put all of my palm trees on the tape. That way it's easy for me to paint. Next, I painted the tops of the palm trees with my maize paint and then again, I kept going back and forth between the maize paint and the bright yellow paint to give it that dimension. Next I took some green paint and I painted the stem of my little palm tree. Can you guess what we're making these into? Now you're going to have to tell me if this is a stretch or if these look like sunflowers. I keep going back and forth. So then to add the little middle section, I took these bubble stickers from the Dollar Tree and I painted four of them with that chocolate bar paint, apple barrel paint. And before I put those on, I took that orange paint again and just dry brushed over the yellow part of my sunflower. And I also did the same with the Waverly Antique Wax. Then I took those little stickers and I put them right in the middle of my sunflowers. So again, you're going to have to let me know whether these look like sunflowers or whether they look like palm trees. Would you know that they were palm trees if you didn't see this? <laughs> So next up, I took this little mini terracotta pot and I dry brushed some ivory chalk paint all around the sides. And then I took some foam and I'm going to put some foam in the middle because we are going to stick our little palm trees in our pot. So I just cut off little pieces and just made sure the entire center was filled with the foam. To clean up my little mess of the foam, I used my little ladybug. Keep in mind that any tools that you see me use, they're probably in the description box down below so you can pick up one for yourself. Now as I was testing and putting my little sunflowers in the pot, I decided that they needed to be raised up a little more. So I just broke off little pieces of a skewer and just hot glued it to the stem. Then I'm going to push them in the foam at different heights. Once I had my sunflowers arranged how I liked, I went ahead and stuck some moss in my pot and I did glue down some areas that way it wasn't so flimsy and would fly right off or fall out. And then I just kind of worked with my pot a little bit until I had my sunflowers look exactly how I wanted. Next, I took some twine and I hot glued it to the middle section of that top part of my terracotta pot and I wrapped it around a few times and then cut it off in the back and hot glued the end down. Then I made a simple shoelace bow with my twine and hot glued that to the front of my pot.
Now, as I was arranging this, I noticed some of the skewer was poking out, so I did decide to pull my little sticks out and paint them in that same green that I used to paint the stem. Then, after they were dry, I stuck them back in, and now I have this pot of sunflowers. Next up, I grabbed this crate that I actually bought for 50 cents at Michael's in the spring, and I was going to use them for my daughter's birthday party, and then I didn't end up using them, so now I have a bunch of them. So, I, again, I just took my baby wipe and my Waverly Antique Wax, and I faux stained my little basket. Then I dry brushed the ivory paint over my basket, and then I'm going to sand it all down to help it blend in. This is your friendly reminder that if you're loving what you see today, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Not only does it really help my channel to grow, but it also tells YouTube that you're loving my content and that you want to see more, and they'll start sticking my videos in your homepage. So if you would ever be so kind, please give this video a like. I would greatly appreciate it. After my basket was ready, I took some burlap and again, I'm going to cut off a long piece and then cut off the edges to fray my piece of burlap. I apologize for all of the random things that are being thrown into my shot here. My daughter was hanging out with me and she kept taking things out of my craft stash and throwing them at me to ask if she could play with them. So I apologize for all the random stuff. After my burlap was frayed, I stuck the burlap into my basket, and then I'm going to take these sunflowers that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I removed them from the stem, and then just started arranging them. Now, I did end up only using three, and you can see I have three orange and yellow ones, and then I remembered that I had just some solid yellow ones too, so I thought that that would break that up a little bit. After that, I took this little chalkboard tag that I also got from the Dollar Tree and with my chalk pen I wrote 50 cents right on top and then I just clipped that to the little handle. Then I thought that there was a lot of yellow going on in my basket so I decided to say, take some of the leaves off of the stems and stuck that those kind of in between all the flowers and I really thought that that helped break up all of the yellow. So this is so simple. You don't have to have this exact crate. The Dollar Tree sells a ton of different crates so you can still achieve this look by buying one of those. But how easy it was that DIY and it adds so much color and it was it's so fun. For my next DIY, I'm going to take this little picture holder stand, I guess that's what you would call it, and I removed it from its packaging, and then I'm going to pop that little hanger off of the top and the bow, but keep the bow near because we are going to use that. Now there is a hole that is left after you pop that thing out, but I just left it there. I sanded it down a little bit because I will be covering it. Next, I took my antique Waverly wax and I'm just dry brushing some of that on this little picture holder. Next, to blend it all together, I sanded the entire thing down. After that, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to hot glue twine to the top of my frame. Now, you do see a little sticker there. Ignore it because I do end up kind of moving it around and switching it. So I just hot glued the twine to the top and I purposely covered the hole and then I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom.
So prior to doing the twine, I actually hot glued one of the little sunflower stickers from that sheet onto the bow. And that's also where I got this little sunflower sticker as well. So when I started making this, I really had no idea what I was doing. So I kind of just created it as I went. But I just took more of those stickers and I stuck them in the middle of the twine. And then I hot glued the bow to the side of the twine on the top left. And it was perfect, it was easy. It took minutes to do. For my next DIY, I'm gonna take this gnome, and this was originally a patriotic gnome that I got around the 4th of July, and I had painted it, and then it went into the Island of Misfit DIYs because I never ended up using it. <laughs> so now I'm going to repaint the whole thing, except for the little face in the hat, with some Waverly chalk paint in white. After that was dry, I took this sunflower theme kitchen towel that I got from the Dollar Tree and I cut off a little section because I'm actually going to cover the hat with this. To adhere my towel to the gnome, I simply used some hot glue. Now this gnome is metal, so technically I probably should have used some super glue, but it seems to be holding up okay. So I hot glued the brim first and I purposely put the hem at the bottom so it kind of was the ending to the hat if that makes sense so it kind of had a finish to the hat. And then I just trimmed it down and then flipped it and onto the back and hot glued the fabric around to the back of the hat. After my hat was finished, I took some black acrylic paint and I painted the shoes of my little gnome. Next, I took that bright yellow paint and I painted his shirt with that. And then I took some orange paint and painted his pants. Now, I'm going to be honest, this probably isn't my favorite DIY. I had something completely different in my head, but it just didn't end up looking like how I thought it was. I still think it turned out cute, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. So at this point in my DIY, sorry about my head, <laughs> it was kind of looking a little bit like candy corn, so I knew I had to break all of that up with some green ribbon. P.S. Great idea to make a candy corn themed gnome that might be coming soon. <laughs> all right, so I took some of this green burlap again and I cut off a little strip and then I hot glued it to the brim of his hat. Then I'm gonna cut off another little strip and I'm going to make a little belt. After that, I took another one of those sunflower stickers and I stuck it right in between his hands. Then to add some detail, I took my black paint marker and I'm just adding some stitching around his pants and his shirt. Next, I took this little puff ball and I hot glued it to the tip of his hat. And then I took some yellow paint and I dry brushed that over his black shoes because I just felt like they needed a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. 
Now, as I was looking at this, I realized that the belt was actually in the wrong spot. So I peeled it off and then I'm going to cut the seam part of the ribbon, which you'll see in a minute. So the wired part, and then I'm going to hot glue that a little higher than what I originally had just right there. Now I did realize that this is also in the wrong spot. It's actually supposed to go up a little where that indent is, but that's okay. I mean, it still worked. So then I just added some hot glue to the back to reinforce it. So now that I moved the belt, the stitch lines were kind of weird looking now. <laughs> they were off. So I added several coats of the orange paint to try to cover the stitch marks that were there. And then after that dried, I just went ahead and repainted my stitch marks on. Now, I just felt like it needed one more thing. So I took that chocolate brown paint and I painted his little nose because it was pink before and it kind of just looked odd. So I painted his little nose and then I ended up just dry brushing that paint all over this and I don't know it kind of added something and brought it to life. I kind of felt like this tied it all together. I don't know. Let me know what you think of this specific project. Like I said, I don't believe it's one of my favorites. I mean, it's okay, but I think I've done better. <laughs> Okay, we finally made it to the 10th and final DIY and it just so happens to be my favorite. So I grabbed this picture that I picked up from the Dollar Tree, I removed it from its packaging and then I pushed out the picture part. I flipped it over and then I painted the back white. Now I know what you're thinking, it's already white, why are you painting it? It's cause it looked a little bit too much like cardboard. So I wanted to give it a brushing of that Waverly chalk paint in white. Once that dried, I took a ruler and I placed it in the middle of my board and then I drew a line on the top and on the bottom. Then I just continued drawing lines all the way across the board. Then I took my finger and I smudged all of my pencil marks to make it look like shiplap. After that, I took my chippy brush and Waverly Antique Wax and I dry brushed that all over my board. I absolutely love that look. Next, I sanded it all down to make it all blend together. After that, it was time to replace the board back into the frame, so by using some hot glue, I glued the backing back in. Finally, I'm going to take these wall decals again, and I'm going to take the single sunflower and I'm going to place it on to my board. Now, of course, the whole thing is not going to fit, so I just used the upper half. And at first, I had it hanging off, but then you're going to see that I actually move it down so the whole sunflower is on the board. So I just place it on there. I cut off the stem that was hanging over, and then I cut off the leaf that was also attached to it as well. And then this is when I'm going to move it down. First, I tried to push it over just to see if I like it, but I didn't. So I took it off and now I'm going to move it down. And then the part that is hanging over the board onto the frame, I'm actually going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut that off because I don't want it to cover the bottom of the frame. I'm going to zoom in here in just a second so you can see exactly what I am talking about. Now I would use my little knife but I couldn't find it so the scissors worked just fine. But as you can see I'm just kind of cutting in between the frame and the board. That way it it the stem or the leaf ends right at the bottom of the board. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> 
After that, I decided that I wanted to add another leaf to that left side of my sunflower. So I simply just cut it out off of that decal and then I just placed it right on to my board. Then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna trim up the parts of the petals that are hanging over. And then to protect my decal, I am going to give this a layer of Mod Pod. And that was it. That completed this last and final DIY. How easy was that? And it just so happened end up being my favorite one. And now that that DIY is finished, it is now time for our final reveal. absolutely loved how this tear tray came out this did take me a while to try to figure out that's why I did not record it but after it all came together I really loved the look I think it is a great segue into fall and the great thing about sunflowers is that it could be either summer or fall so it could really last a long time you're gonna have to let me know in the comments what you think of my tear tray So this first DIY is super easy. So I first started off with two of these little wooden cars that I got in Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree. And then I took these leftover paint brushes, the foam brushes, because we're going to be using the wooden stick. So the first thing I did was cut off the wheels. Now you can cut them off with scissors, but I was just afraid they were gonna ruin my scissors. So I grabbed my miter shears and they just clipped right off. It was perfect. So I went ahead and took off all of the wheels on both of the cars. Now when you do this, you wanna make sure that you get as close to the wheel as possible. So you wanna get the majority of the stick out of the wheel. And I'm gonna show you two different ways that I did this and you're gonna see why you're gonna want to really get that stick off of there. After that, I went ahead and sanded all of them down. Next, I took the wood glue that I got from Dollar Tree and then some hot glue for that permanent hold and that instant hold and I stacked four of the wheels on top of each other and then I went ahead and glued the stick at the bottom of that. Now because there's still a little piece of the dowel rod on each of the wheels you can see that they're not really sticking. They're kind of wobbly. So this was the first one I made and then I learned from my mistakes and I'm going to show you what I did to kind of fix this problem and it worked out so much better, trust me. <laughs> Okay, so before I started gluing my second one together, I decided to take this little knife and really get as close as possible and get all of that off. I mean, I could have really sanded it all down, but I just didn't want to do that. It just seemed easier to me to go ahead and snip off, and this worked out so much better. Make sure to sand down each piece before you start gluing. And then I just did the same thing, and as you can see, they are sticking so well, especially when I go to glue on the stick right here you in the first one you could tell I had to hold it I had to let it sit but this one attached instantly because it wasn't wobbly because there was no bump in the middle with that stick so it turned it worked out so much better so taking that extra step will really save you a lot of work at the end 
So after these were dry, I went ahead and took my hot glue and just kind of ran my hot glue all over the top of the little honeycomb and then on the bottom. I think that's what this is called, <laughs> or honey stick, or I'm not sure what this is called. Then I let that dry. Next, I took this paint color called Maze, and we're going to be using this paint color throughout this entire video. You can pick this up at Walmart, although I did hear that it is going out of stock, so you're going to want to hurry, but it is a Waverly chalk paint, and it's called Maze. So I went ahead and poured that in a little coffee filter and then put some water just to kind of water it down so it looked more like honey and it wasn't so stark yellow. And then I simply just painted all over the hot glue on both of my little honey sticks. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call them. <laughs> After those were dry, I took this little buffalo check gang or gingham ribbon uh, that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just simply tied a simple bow right underneath where the little honey part is. Then I cut off the tails and I did this for both. Now I'm going to be showing you all of this in the final reveal at the end so you're going to want to stick with me. All right, for my next DIY, I grabbed this little gnome from the Dollar Tree and I purposely got the one with the yellow shirt because I thought that it might save me a little time. So to start off, I just started painting his hat with just regular black acrylic paint. You can use any black paint you have. Then I went ahead and grabbed these little clothespin bees that I found at Hobby Lobby and they were 40% off because they were in the spring shop. And I took the one off of, I took the bee off of the clothespin. Next, I grabbed that gingham ribbon again, or buffalo check, and I hot glued it around the brim of the hat. Now, I made sure to kind of scoot it up a little bit so a little bit of the black was showing underneath, and then I just hot glued it around. After that, I took that bee and hot glued it to the front of that ribbon. Now, off camera, I did go back and paint his yellow shirt with the maize color because I wanted it all to be matching, and this was just a little too golden yellow, so so you'll see at the end how it all coordinated, but that was it and this came out super cute. So I have been obsessed with making these little book stacks out of these crates for my tiered trays. And like I said in January, you're gonna see me make one for literally every tiered tray this year. <laughs> so I went ahead and picked up this wooden crate from the Dollar Tree, and then I gave the top of the box, well, technically it's the bottom, but it's gonna be flipped over. But I painted the top with the yellow maize paint, and then the top little slat and the bottom slat. Now I did go ahead and paint the sides. I know technically, Technically, the sides of a book would not be yellow, but I really wanted it to be bright and colorful, so I just decided to do it. Now, when you do this, don't forget to paint on the inside of those little holes as well. For the middle little strip there, I painted that with Waverly chalk paint in white. After that dried, I took my sanding block and lightly sanded over the entire box just to kind of bring out that natural wood from underneath. Next, I took these black stickers from the Dollar Tree and I started all the way on one end and then I started backwards. So you wanna start with the end of the word first. But what I spelled out was always be kind, B-E-E, -E, as you're going to see. So like I said, I started all the way off to the side and then worked my way out, starting with the last letter first. Once I was done with that, I took that little knife and I just kind of used it to help me straighten up all the letters, peel them off, make them straighter. And then once I liked how they were positioned, I pushed them down really hard. I put a lot of pressure. And then I took my sanding block and just lightly sanded over it so that way the lettering wasn't so stark black. Thank you. 
Next, I used my black paint marker, or you could use a black Sharpie, and starting from the bottom, I just kind of drew little lines to make it look like the buzzing of the bee, I guess. I don't know, it's just one of those little designs that always seem to be on bee decor. Then after that was dry, I took my sanding block and went ahead and sanded over that too. Next, to seal my letters and my paint, I gave the front a coat of Mod Podge. To add a little cuteness up top, I took this ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby, and I loved it because it has the little balls on the side, and I decided I wanted to actually make it a little wider. So what I did was I started the bottom of the box and then went up and around and down the bottom, back to the bottom of the other side of the box. But you can see that I'm doing it off to the side on one of the holes. Then I took a second strip and just put it right next to the first strip to, like I said, make it a little bit wider. Next, I took some yellow twine that I also got from the Dollar Tree, and starting in the middle, I just wrapped it around so it kind of covered where the two ribbons up top met. Now, I did go ahead and wrap it all the way underneath the crate too because it really was not gonna add that much instability I guess or make it that much wobbly and then I went ahead and cut it off at the bottom tied the two ends together and add a little bit hot glue to help it stay down next I took more of that gingham ribbon that I used in the first two DIYs and I just made a very simple bow now I did kind of want my tails to be long because I wanted the tails to hang uh, one tail to hang over the front and then one tail to hang over the side as you can see here And then I just hot glued it down to the right side of my crate I like to leave one side of my box or my stack of books free of any kind of accessories because it's a great way to be able to stack things on top of to add layers to your tiered tray. So I like to keep the other end completely clear. Then I went ahead and just dovetailed the ends of my tails. Next, I grabbed this little bee that actually came in a package from Hobby Lobby and they were originally picks to put in floral arrangements, but I pulled the pick out and this little bee was brown and yellow and really gave me that Pikachu vibe and that just needed to go. So what I did was just painted all of the brown parts with my black paint. And then I just went over the little wings a little bit too to make them a little bolder and then used my white paint marker to add little eyes and then I I simply hot glued them down in the middle of my bow. And then I was left with this really cute, always be kind stack book set. For my fourth DIY, this is so easy. I found these little jars from the Dollar Tree and on the side, you can't really tell right now, but it's kind of the shape of a honeycomb or what would make you think of bees. So all I did was simply paint each of the lids with a few coats of the maize paint from Walmart. Once those were dry, I hot glued one of these little blocks that you can get in a package from the Dollar Tree on top of the middle of each lid. Then I went ahead and painted those with the maize paint as well to make it all blend in. Then to finish off this project, I took those bees that I got from the clothespin, popped the clothespin off and simply hot glued the bee to the front of the block. And I was left with these super cute little jars for my tiered tray. This is DIY number five. I could not believe it when I walked into the Dollar Tree and right there, right at the front were these little boxes. I mean, if this doesn't scream bees, well there's bees all over it, oh, I don't know what does. And I'm showing you there that it's actually a two pack. So the first thing I did was took them out of the package and then I took the smaller lid and this cat scratching post or block or whatever you want to call it and I just traced the small lid around the little cat scratching little thing I don't even know what to call it but this just reminded me of the honeycomb and then I made sure that it could fit inside of the lid so I did have to trim down some of the um, edges and the sides but I just wanted to make sure that it was a perfect fit
after that, I took out the little uh, uh, honeycomb, I guess you want to call it, and I painted the outside of the lid with black acrylic paint. After the lid was dry, I went ahead and popped that little honeycomb back in. And as you can see, I didn't even need hot glue. That's how perfect the fit was. And I, it fit in there very tightly. Then I just kind of cut up some scrap pieces to fill in any holes that may have been around the sides. Next, I took my hot glue and just spread hot glue all over again just to kind of make that honey look. Next, I took those bees from the pics again and of course I made them look <laughs> go from Pikachu to actual bees and I painted all the brown in black. And then once my hot glue was dry, I took that maize paint and just painted over all of the hot glue. Now it did kind of look a little bright at first so I took my finger and I kind of wiped it just to kind of make it a little less stark yellow. And then I just did this all over the hot glue all over my little honeycomb. Once my paint was dry, I took my bees, and they do have little wire legs on them, so I cut them off, but I just thought it would stick better onto my little honeycomb. And then I went ahead and hot glued the bees on my honeycomb. Next, I flipped it on its side and took that buffalo check ribbon and just hot glued the ribbon all around the side of the lid. Now to add extra support to the back to help it stand, I took one of these tumbling tower blocks and hot glued it to the bottom of my little honeycomb. Now off camera, I did go back and paint that with black acrylic paint. That way it all blended in, but how cute was that? Okay, next up, I grabbed this candle from the Dollar Tree, and of course I got it because it's yellow. And this one's so simple. All I did was hot glue some of that Buffalo Check ribbon on top, it's kind of right underneath the lip of the candle. And then I decided to put some at the bottom where you can see that it, it's kind of a different size, it's like the very bottom. And then I took one of those bees off of the clothespin again, and then just hot glued it to the top of the buffalo check ribbon and that was it and it left me with this really cute candle and by the way it smells so good but this is perfect for a tiered tray For this next DIY, I grabbed one of these pots that I had left over from St. Patrick's Day. And again, I just took my hot glue and just let it drip, starting from the top and just let it drip down to make it look like honey was spilling over from the pot. And then I did load up the top to the very top of it. Then I set it aside to let it dry. Once it was dry, I took that maize paint again and just simply painted over all of the dried hot glue to make it look like honey. Once that was dry, I took some little pieces of floral foam and stuck them inside my pot. Next, I took this little garden chalkboard stick that came in a package from the Dollar Tree. I did cut down the bottom to make it a little shorter and then by using my white paint marker, I wrote free honey right on the chalkboard. 
after that was done, I stuck it inside of the floral foam and then realized that I need, needed something to go inside. So I cut up more of that cat scratching thing and I stuck that in the middle around my little sign. Then I painted the that with the maze paint from Waverly. To finish this off, I went ahead and took one of those bees from the clothespin and hot glued that to the stick and then I took that buffalo check ribbon and made a very simple bow and tied it to one part of the little handle of my pot. And now I have this really cute little honey pot. This next DIY I am definitely adding to every single tiered tray I make for the rest of my life. <laughs> so I started off with a plunger stick and by using my table saw I cut them down to five inches and I cut two pieces at five inches. Then I went ahead and sanded the ends of both. So on one of the sticks I actually painted it in white Waverly chalk paint but you're gonna see me change that so just skip this step. I don't even know why I showed it but then the other one I painted with just regular black acrylic paint. Now you wanna make sure to get the ends too. Then I went back to that original stick that I painted white and decided to paint it with that maize color instead. Then I put both of those aside and let them dry. Once they were dry, I took some letters, some scrapbook letters that I got from the Dollar Tree and they were stickers, and I spelled out happy on one of my dowels and B, B-E-E, -E, on the other one. Now on the one that I spelled out happy, I, after all my letters were down, I painted over it with that maize paint. Now I did have to give this a couple coats to completely cover the black. Now this is the other one. This is not the one I just painted yellow. This is the one that was originally white that I painted yellow. And on this one, I put B. Now you notice that I'm putting the words all the way off to one side. I purposely do that because then that way when I go to display, I can use them for layering and stacking and things like that. So after this word was on, I took my black paint and painted this entire thing with that. And again, you wanna make sure to get your ends as well. Well, then I put both of those aside and let them dry. After that, I took my little knife to help me peel off the stickers from underneath the top layer of paint. Now, if some of the paint bled through, just like you see here, that E, there's a little black, I just simply took my yellow paint and just painted a little bit over it and that really fixed the problem. Then I took the other one and did the same thing. Now, a little bit of the yellow did get inside my black letters, so I just simply took my black paint marker and traced over it, that way it covered up the yellow that got on it. To make the ends of my rolling pins, I took these earplugs that I got from the Dollar Tree and I used the super glue from the Dollar Tree and hot glue and hot glued one down on each end of my rolling pins. Now you do want to hold this down and make sure it adheres fully and then let it dry. So then once I put the earplugs on, I went ahead and kind of cleaned up the edges so there wasn't any glue seeping out. Once they were fully adhered and dried on the yellow rolling pin, I painted those with white chalk paint. Then on the other rolling pin, after those were glued on, I painted those with the yellow maize paint. Now I did have to give those a couple coats to cover up the orange underneath.
To decorate my rolling pins a little bit, I took my black paint marker and on the yellow rolling pin, I drew that buzzing <laughs> uh, design going from one end of the rolling pin to the word. Then on my black rolling pin, I used that maize paint and a small paintbrush and did the same thing. To complete my rolling pins, I grabbed that ribbon that had the little balls and I only want the balls. So I went ahead and cut off just the end of the ribbon. Then I took some yellow twine, and this is yellow and white twine that I also got from the Dollar Tree, and I took a piece of that and then tied both around the end that had the word. And then I just repeated the same thing on the other rolling pin, and I thought these came out so adorable. You can see why I'm addicted to making these, and they are definitely going on every tiered tray. Real quick, I just wanted to remind you, if you are loving what you're seeing so far, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. That way, you can see more of what I have to offer. Now, to protect my paints, I went ahead and gave each one a coat of Mod Podge. How cute are those? This next one is super easy. I found this little yellow flower wax warmer at the Dollar Tree, and all I'm doing is simply hot gluing one of those bees. Now, I did transformed this from Pikachu and painted it black as well. And I hot glued one to one side of the flower and one to the other side. Now you will see me take one of them off and move it in just a second. And in just a second, you'll see what this wax warmer actually looks like when I flip it to its side right here. Then I took that Buffalo check ribbon and I hot glued it around the top of the warmer right underneath the flower. Then, like I said, I decided to move one of my bees so I took the front one off and then I hot glued it to where the opening is underneath. Now I'm planning on adding a little tea light candle in here and it looks super, super adorable. I loved how this came out. It's so easy too. Okay, we finally made it to the last DIY, and of course, no tear tray is complete without a beaded garland. So what I did was I took some 16 millimeter beads and I put 15 beads in three plastic baggies. Then I took 15 20 millimeter beads and put those in a plastic bag. Now in one of my plastic bags with the smaller beads, I put some of that maize paint and some water. Then I took the 20 millimeter beads and did the same thing. I put some maize paint and some water. Then for the other two, the smaller beads, I put white chalk paint in one of them and then black chalk paint in the other and I added water to each of those as well. Then I just kind of used my hands and rolled it all around and made sure that all of the paint got onto all of the beads. I learned this method a couple months ago and I've been using this to paint my beads. So in the end, you should have 15 16 millimeter black beads, white beads, and yellow beads, and then 15 20 millimeter yellow beads. So once they were all dry, or once they were all covered, I should say, I took a skewer and just took out all of the beads. I didn't want to pour it all in there because I didn't want all the water to get in there or else they would never dry. So that's how I got all of the beads out. Now the yellow ones I did go ahead and give another coat to because they did not stain very well and I think it's because I didn't put enough paint in there. But after all of my beads were dry, I took my yellow twine and added some hot glue to kind of make the edge a little pointier to help me thread through all of my beads. Now I did follow a pattern here, but I messed up this first little bit, so I'll tell you my pattern in a minute, but this is what I'm doing. I went ahead and put on the three smaller beads and then a big yellow bead. Now we'll be doing something to those big yellow beads in a minute. Okay, so the pattern that I followed was black small bead, yellow small bead, white small bead, and then big yellow bead. I hope that made sense. And then I just did this until all of my beads were used.
Once all of my beads were threaded on, I took this yellow and white twine and then I just wrapped it around the my sand block because I really like the length that that is. Now I can't tell you how many times I wrapped it. I just wrapped it and wrapped and wrapped it until I got the thickness that I wanted. Then I went ahead and took it off. All right, now follow me closely with this because I kind of messed it up so it's kind of choppy, but I do, I'm gonna try to explain this the best I can. So I took what that twine, and I looped it through one of the ends of my beaded garland. Now you can do this, but do not tie it off. I forgot that I wanted to add that buffalo check ribbon. So then I went ahead and cut off the ends. Now, what you didn't see was, once I realized I forgot the ribbons, I took that twine, that big bundle of twine, the tassel, off, I untied it, and then I cut up all my ribbons, and now I'm just laying it flat on one end of the string of my garland, and now I'm tying it back on. I really hope that makes sense. I apologize, I just didn't know how else to do this. So then, once I had all my twine and the ribbons on, I took one of the smaller pieces and just tied it up top. That way it looks like a tassel. Then I cut off the excess string from the actual garland and hot glued that down. Now to the other string that's wrapped around the tassel, I just kind of wrapped it around and then I didn't have enough to tie it in the back, so I just hot glued it and it, it's fine. It worked out perfectly. Once my tassel was secure on one end, I pushed all my beads down so the last bead right on top of the tassel is flush right up against it. Then I gave my little tassel a haircut to make sure all of the twine and ribbon was even. For the other end of my garland, I'm going to be using these really cute bee wood cutouts that I got from Hobby Lobby, and I took out the little hive. Now before I hot glued it to the string, I did tie a knot right underneath that black last bead. Then I just simply flipped it over and hot glued it down. Now you wanna make sure that the bead is on top of the little wood piece or and you don't want it behind the wood piece. So you wanna make sure to put the bead right on top of it. Then I cut off any excess string and then doused the back of it with hot glue. That way it didn't come off. I did end up adding a little piece of tape just to give it an extra hold. Okay, so now we are going to work on those big yellow beads. Now for this, I started off using a Sharpie, but then I switched to my black paint marker. But I simply just drew stripes on every big yellow bead. Now at first I only went halfway around the bead and then I decided just to go all the way around the bead and I did three stripes on every big yellow bead. I am not doing this to the smaller yellow beads, just the big ones. I thought that maybe this replicated a little bit of a bee. <laughs> I thought it would be cute. So I just did this until all of my big beads were covered in stripes. Now, I, as I was looking at that little hive, I just decided that it just needed a little bit more black, so I simply just outlined it, and it's white there, so it was easy for me to follow. And then that completed this amazing beaded garland. This next one isn't really a DIY, but I wanted to show you this anyways. I picked up this bee in the garden section at the Dollar Tree, and it was just a little too golden yellow, so I went ahead and painted all of the yellow with my Maze Waverly chalk paint. That way it matched all of my other decor on my tiered tray. Now it's time for my final reveal. What do you think?
Now, as you can see, these are not on my tiered tray yet. You're gonna have to join me for a video in the next couple weeks as I decorate my coffee bar because I have a lot of great ideas in mind. But what do you think of these amazing, beautiful DIYs? I am absolutely loving this bee theme and I know my mom is loving it too. She loves the color yellow, so it's just so bright in the kitchen and so pretty and I cannot wait to put these all out on the coffee bar. You're gonna have to let me know in the comments which one is your favorite and if you're going to be recreating any of these DIYs. I wanna thank you so much for sticking out this video today. You are true MVPs. I hope you got a lot of inspiration and a lot of ideas on how you can decorate your home for summer. Hey, if you liked this video, don't forget to check this one out right here and click my photo to become a subscriber. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye.